Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. In this video, we turn to the third type of noun phrase, our expressions. In the previous two videos, we looked at anaphors and then pronouns. You remember, anaphors are like little two-year-olds. They need to be near their parents. So, anaphors are subject to principle A, which says they must be bound, that's C commanded and co-indexed, with their antecedent within their clause. Pronouns are like teenagers. They prefer a little bit of distance. They must be free. That means either they're not co-indexed and C commanded by a noun phrase at all, or if that does happen, they have to be in separate clauses. That's principle B. In this unit, we're going to talk about our expressions. And to extend our metaphor a little further and maybe stretch it to its limits, our expressions are like hermits. They don't like having antecedents at all, ever, anywhere. So that's the crux of our expressions. And this makes sense. Our expressions, the R in our, our expressions means they're referring expressions. So they're referring to things in the world or in the imaginary world. But they don't take their meaning ever from something that's within the sentence. So let's take a couple of examples. Imagine Heidi has two names. Her One name is Heidi and the other one is Miriam. And we might mark these both with the index I to indicate that they refer to the same individual. You can't say Heidi kissed Miriam to mean Heidi kissed herself. That's just not true. When you say Heidi kissed Miriam, it implies that Miriam is somebody different. The same is true even if the antecedent is a pronoun um, or uh, so for example, she kissed Heidi. Heidi cannot be co-indexed with she here. This sentence is a violation of principle C because Heidi is C commanded by and co-indexed with some item. Notice this is true whether the two noun phrases are in the same clause as in the first two sentences or if Heidi is in a different clause, uh, an embedded clause, like in the third sentence. She said that Heidi was a disco queen. So the net result of all of this is that principle C, which governs our expressions, says our expressions must be free everywhere. Let's look at a couple of trees just to see what I'm talking about. So Heidi danced with Heidi, right? We'll use the same name twice, but it doesn't matter. Um, although it's the case that um, the two noun phrases are co-indexed, that means that Heidi is going to be, um, is, is likely to be bound. They are in a C command relationship, so the higher NP, C commands the lower NP, and that means they're bound. If you have an R expression, like the lower noun phrase Heidi here, that is bound, that's a violation of principle C. Uh, it's not free, so that's why there's an asterisk in the front of this tree, is because it's a violation of principle C. Same thing holds true in the second tree here. Heidi said, blah, 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 Heidi. Those two noun phrases are co-indexed. They are in a C command relationship, so the higher Heidi, C commands the lower one. That means they're bound. Co-indexed and C command means bound. Our expressions cannot be bound. They must be free. So this is also a violation of principle C. One is I often see students write things like the pronoun and the antecedent bind each other. This is not possible because binding is an asymmetric relationship. The antecedent binds the anaphor or pronoun. It's never the case that the pronoun binds the antecedent. This is because the, the C command relationship has to hold here, the asymmetric C command relationship. So it's never the case that the two nouns bind each other. The antecedent binds the anaphor or the pronoun. 
Another common mistake is that um, people assume that in a sentence like he loves Jim with that particular co-indexation that the problem is in the pronoun. But this is not a problem because he C commands Jim. Jim does not C command he. So the he is not the problem with this sentence. It's the Jim. Jim is in our expression um, and it is the element that is bound here and is a principal C violation. But just because Jim is in our expression does not make it the binder, right? Uh, it's not the binder because it's the element that's C commanded.